Okay, we're now going to continue with some additional uh, techniques for text summarization. I'm going to go very briefly over a few more papers. Uh, well, the first one is by uh, John Conroy, Diane O'Leary from 2001. Uh, it uses uh, hidden Markov models for text summarization, and the idea is that we want to take into account the local dependencies between sentences. The idea is that you don't want to include uh, sentences in the summary uh, randomly, you know, independent of one another. Very often, if you include a sentence, you have to decide whether the sentence before or after it should also be included. So the features that I used are things like position, number of terms, uh, similarity to the document terms, so that, which is very similar to the centroid idea in the Mead paper. So the HMM alternates between summary and non-summary states. So you have the probability of staying in a summary state or of leaving a summary state going to a non-summary state and so on, uh, all the four possible combinations. So here's an example from the Conroy and O'Leary paper. You have uh, green and blue uh, sentences that tell you whether you want to include the sentence in the summary or not. Next paper is by Miles Osborne, 2002. Uh, he was the first one to, to take into account the fact that the features used in previous papers were actually dependent and techniques like naive Bayesian and so on should not be uh, necessarily the best ones. So uh, in his case, he used the max or log linear model uh, to take into account the dependencies between the different features and he got better performance than naive Bayes. So the features that he used were sentence length, sentence position, whether the sentence is inside the introduction of the document, whether it's inside the conclusion, and so on. Now the next paper is by Erkan and Radev, 2004. It was published in uh, Journal of Artificial Intelligence Research, or JER, uh, and this was the first paper on a uh, method called based on random walks for multi-document summarization, and that technique also works for single document summaries. So the idea is something called lexical centrality. So lexical centrality means that if a sentence is likely to be visited uh, used during a random walk process on a similarity graph corresponding to all the sentences in the set of documents, then that sentence is worthy of including in the summary. So the steps are the following. You represent the text as graph uh, with uh, sentences connected to each other if they have a lot of words in common. And then you uh, just use a standard graph centrality metric, for example, between the centrality or eigenvector centrality to determine the top sentences. One of the components of LexRank is graph clustering. So before you want to pick the most central sentences, you want also to segment the graph into units that correspond to different themes. So here's an example. We have a collection of uh, 10 or 11 sentences uh, from different documents that correspond to the same event. The first one, D1, S1, just means that it's sentence one from document one. The second one is sentence one from document two, and so on. So we have 11 of those in total. And we can now build a similarity matrix that corresponds to all the different pairs of sentences in that input. Now it's obvious that the diagonal entries are all ones. However, we are also very interested in the high values that are not on the diagonal. So for example, there is a 0 0.45 value here between sentences one and two. So sentence one and sentence two are going to be very strongly connected in the graph. So now let's see how we can compute the cosine centrality of uh, this uh, graph using a cosine cutoff uh, of 0 0.3. So what we have here is 11 nodes, each of which corresponds to one of the sentences in the input and only those sentence pairs that have a similarity above 0 0.3 are connected. Now, as you can see, this graph is still fairly disconnected and there's not much useful information that can be gained from the uh, structure. If we lower the cutoff uh, for cosine similarity to 0 0.2, we're going to see much better structure. In fact, it will be very obvious at this point that sentence D4S1 is very highly connected to the rest of the graph, whereas sentences like D2S2 and D3S1 are not as highly connected. If we keep lowering the threshold, we're going to get a situation where almost everything is connected to everything. So we don't want to go that far. And in the Erkan and Radev paper, they found that a threshold of about 0 0.15 gives you the best um, information value for the graph. So there's approximately half of the connections are actually present and half are not present. So in a 
graph like this, what you want is uh, for sentences to vote for the most central sentence by essentially passing messages along the edges of the graph. So if D4S1 is the most central sentence, uh, we want to produce that as part of the summary. So here I'm going to discuss a little bit more advanced material. You can skip this part if you don't feel comfortable with uh, the linear algebra used in it. So here's how LexRank works. LexRank is the lexical centrality method used in uh, the Erkan and Radev paper. So it's based on a square connectivity matrix of the, where each node corresponds to uh, a sentence. Uh, it can be either directed or undirected. Now, an eigenvalue for a square matrix A is a scalar lambda such that there exists a vector X, which is not the null vector, such that uh, the product AX of the matrix with that vector is equal to the product of the scalar lambda with that vector. So that's some sort of a, a implicit direction of the matrix. The normalized eigenvector associated with the largest lambda is called the principal eigenvector of alpha. And a matrix is called a stochastic matrix when the sum of entries in each row sum to one and none of them is negative. So they all form some uh, probability distribution. And there is a theorem that says that all stochastic matrices have a principal eigenvector. So the connectivity matrix in this kind of setup is similar to the one that is used in PageRank for document ranking. That's the system behind Google and it's also known to be reducible. So one can use an iterative power method to compute the principal eigenvector for pretty much arbitrarily large uh, matrices. So that eigenvector corresponds to the stationary value of the Markov stochastic process described by the connectivity matrix, essentially random walk over the nodes of the matrix in proportion to the weights of the edges. And uh, the stationary value of the Markov matrix is computed by that power method. The power method is something very straightforward. P is the vector of values that correspond to the uh, centralities of the nodes. E transposed is the transpose of the connectivity matrix. So if we have uh, the uh, eigenvector formula P equals E transpose P, we, we can also write this as I minus E transpose P equals zero, where I is the matrix that has ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Uh, and then uh, in page rank, there's also an added twist uh, to deal with dead end pages. So if you end up in a node that doesn't have any outgoing edges, then it's possible with the probability one minus epsilon to start randomly from a different page. So the value of a node P of V our vertex is equal to one minus epsilon divided by n. So this is the probability of the teleportation, a random jump, plus epsilon, uh, the sum of the normalized values of the centrality for the adjacent nodes, where PR are the nodes that are connected to V. And eigenvector centrality uh, is computed in the following way. The paths in the random walk are just weighted by the centrality of the nodes that the path connects. So uh, in, in general, uh, the lex rank method was found to be very successful for uh, an evaluation of summarization based on DUC, where DUC is the NIST uh, uh, new summarization corpus. Uh, and this was an official evaluation used for many years in the mid 2000s. So the next paper that I want to mention very briefly is by Gong and Liu, 2001. This is the first paper that uses uh, latent semantic analysis, LSA, something which we have talked about in the past in this class. Uh, it works on both single and multi-document summarization cases and doesn't use any uh, explicit uh, semantics in linguistics, for example, WordNet. So each document is represented as a word by sentence matrix where each row corresponds to a word and each column corresponds to a sentence. Uh, the weights in the matrix are based on the TFIDF values of the words. So LSA, as we remember from a previous lecture, is based on singular value decomposition. So we want to represent the matrix A as the product of U, sigma, and V transpose, where the rows of V transpose are independent topics that correspond to the documents. And then we want to pick the sentences that contain uh, the independent topics. So that's, in summary, how uh, the Gong and Liu method works. 
So we're going to continue uh, with evaluation of summarization in the next segment.